This episode contains adult language, mature situations, insider information about the anime industry, various animation terms such as in-betweening, overly critical in-betweener checkers, the power of anime, and low wages. Listener discretion is advised. Spark and Manga Review, episode 354, Animata. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga Review. I'm your host Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjourno, and what's up? Yes, we are back for another fun-filled episode of this wonderful podcast. And I hope all of you have been doing well. Things have been, well, awesome on my end. Things are going great. It is now February, so I'm excited for all the things that are going on. Besides the Oscars this month, you have some cool TV shows like Lock and Key. The Oscars are this month, and kind of more importantly than that, we are about four episodes into our amazing, our wonderful, our great Bondathon, Spyrokin's review of the James Bond films leading up to No Time to Die in April. Our first two episodes were released this weekend on the first and second, and our next two are this weekend. We're going to keep releasing two a week until we catch up and then we'll be good. Now, uh, what am I forgetting beforehand? Well, holy shit, I can't even forgot this, but if you're joining us for the first time, welcome! You're probably wondering what the hell Spyrokin is. Let me explain it for you. Spyrokin is a podcast that provides informative reviews about connectedly enhanced narratives. Pretty much what that means is whatever episode you listen to, we discuss the topic at hand. Since this is the manga review, obviously we talk about manga. We tell you the pros and cons about it, how the art style is, the overarching plot, the character development, and if it's worth investing your time in or not. You don't have to agree with anything that I or my co-host say, but we try to be educational, enlightening, exciting, and most importantly, entertaining. You can find any of our earlier episodes at www.spirakin.com. That's S-P-I-R-A-K-N. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and various other social media sites and Apple iTunes. Now, remember to follow us. Like us, and if you want to do something kind of cool, go to tinyurl.com forward slash helpzan. That's H E L P X A N. And that leads to our Apple Podcast site where you can leave a comment in the rating for us. It's kind of like putting a tip in the jar and it gives me a little bit of hope of continuing doing this podcast for so long because we've been doing it since 2008. But I'm digressing a little bit. Um, if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, you can always email me personally at Zan, that's X-A-N, at Spyrokin.com, or direct message me on Twitter, at Spyrokin. I'm always willing to talk to somebody who's cool. And if you know your manga stuff or you want to leave me some mangas you want me to review, let me know, because we decided via the wheel of manga. And now I think you've all been caught up, so let's get to one of our newer segments that we're bringing in or bringing back, if you listen to some more earlier episodes, but what am I talking about? I'm talking about the new segment. A lot of people really enjoyed the fact that I covered the acquisition of Vertical and Kodansha Advanced into Kodansha when they remerged or rebranded last week. So we're going to be starting talking about some manga news. We're still going to be leaving our releases to the end. But let's get to it, shall we? Because we had some interesting news. Now, some of the bigger ones is that keep your hands off of the Aizoken, the manga of it, had a huge increase in sales since the anime came out, and that's really cool. Like, they have 500,000 copies in print after the boost of sales from the anime, so that's pretty great. That's going on. Dark Horse is going to be releasing hardcover editions of the Helsing series, so you're going to be getting the big omnibuses like Berserk. If you like Berserk or Helsing, you're going to love that. One of the cooler series, uh, Hikari Man, is going to be taking a hiatus until March. If you ever read it, it's, I've heard really good things about it. The big news for a geek like me who likes certain series is that the quintessential quintuplets manga is ending. Yes, there are only three more chapters till the end of the series, and this series debuted in August 2017. There's an anime series that the second season is coming out, and we reviewed it a couple of episodes ago, so I feel kind of bad that it's ending, but we'll see where it goes. I kind of hope that they do a twist, maybe? I don't know. We're going to see. Also, ending is Homura Yuki's Infinite Stratos manga. That is ending uh, with the eighth volume. That comes out March 19th. So in one month, it's ending. Also, the manga remake of Gyar was ending. So a lot of manga are ending right now, which is kind of depressing, but we, we have to go with it. Now, some other news. 
Yen Press licensed a new manga called Fiance of the Wizard, which is an Isekai story, which is centering around a girl who is reborn in a new world of wizards and magic, so a world of sorcery, and she ends up becoming the fiance of a wizard. Kind of cool. Now, the last big news for today is one which I'm a little... There's some controversy. We're talking about My Hero Academia, the manga. Now, what happened is that one of the characters, his name has to be changed because it's a reference to victims of people who were experimented on in World War II. Because they revealed his name is Murata Shiga, and this is the code name for human experimentation by the Imperial Japanese Army during the Second Shino-Japanese War of World War II, which is kind of bad. So they're actually going to take his, him away and change his name. They're going to it ASAP. We're going to see what happens when it gets the American release. So, don't know. We're <laughs> excited to see if they fix this because it is a little bit of a faux pas. I'm surprised that My Hero Academia would do that. But um, that's it for the news this week. I know that there's other news networks, but we try to be as newsworthy as possible. So now, with that in mind, let's get to the releases of the week. And we've got a nice set this week to open up our February. And we're talking about February 4th. And we've got over 20 titles. So let's see. Starting off the list, we have Al Haru Ride, Volume 9, the manga, coming out. Blue Exorcist, Volume 23. Boarding School Juliet, Volume 10. Food Wars, Shugeki no Soma, Volume 34. Grand Blue Fantasy, Volume 3. You have more JoJo's. Yes, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, Volume 4. And if you love JoJo's, I highly recommend picking up this story arc. It's my favorite story arc. Sadly, we haven't reviewed it on the podcast because Timbo was supposed to re review it. And then, well, we never reviewed it. Um, you have Jujutsu Kaisen, Volume 2. You have My Brother's Husband, Volume 1 and 2. My Hero Academia, Volume 23. My Hero Academia Smash, Volume 3. Seraph of the End, Volume 18. Short Cake Cake, Volume 7. Takani and Haru, Volume 13. Twin Star Exorcist, Volume 17. Boku Ben, a.k.a. We Never Learn, Volume 8. And finally, Yona of the Dawn, Volume 22. So we've got some very good series on here, some series which are overrated. And the two I'm excited for are JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and... Surprisingly, Boku Ben Volume 8. Now, what about you guys? What are you guys interested in? Let me know. Zan at Spyrker.com. What are these series have you read? Which one are you looking forward to? Let me know. And we'll see how it goes. And now that we've gone past the news, past the new releases, it's the part that many of you have been waiting for. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the review of the episode. Because if you remembered, in that last episode, I spun that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga. And it dictated to be that reviewing a manga that was written by Yasuo Hanamura and published by Kodansha, but more importantly, it's being published by J Novel Club. Now, this is an actual manga, not an e-novel, no but you can get the e-novels online. It's actually like two volumes ahead online. But currently, two volumes are out, or three volumes are out right now. You have It was uh, written in 2015, still coming out, there are five volumes. It is a Senin Slice of Life comedy educational series. And the name of this one is Animeta. Now, Animeta is really cool because this gives you an insider look of the animation process and what it takes to become an animator. And I'm not just talking about the insider grueling nature that was set by Osama Tezuka back in the 60s. Not the insane hours of working there. No, we're talking about the fact that in betweeners get paid by their cells, and if you only make three cells, you get 210 yen per day. So it's kind of ridiculous how it works, but we'll get to that in a bit. So the premise of the story is very simple. You have a young girl named Miyuki Sanada, and she is applying to become an in betweener. She was actually accepted for the second interview, she passed her first interview surprisingly, and she's now going to the physical face-to-face -face interview and exam. So they're going to go evaluate her work as to do an exam, and then she's going to be interviewed, and hopefully she gets the job. We'll see. And she's a little nervous because, one, she's had no formal training, and two, a lot of people are there. 
Now, on the other side, we actually meet the various people of this studio that she's working at. And there are a lot of people there. Now, first off, you have Mr. Igarashi, who is the head of the animation department. You have the director, Kujo, who's head of Studio 7. You have the director of Studio 3, Studio 2, and the various other heads who are looking for new in-betweeners. Now, as they're talking, they're saying, I need three, I need two. And surprisingly, Studio 7, who made a, a recently popular series called Royal Girl Panacata, which made them famous, is looking for one in-betweener because they're very good at what they do. And as they're going through all the people, they're saying who their highlights are. And one of their big highlights is the daughter of a mangaka, even though they say that may lead to some bad habits because she draws manga, not anime. You have a couple of perspectives, and then they get to Sonata's resume. And they're kind of shocked, like, okay, she's 19 years old. Why did we hire her? Or why did we agree to see her interview? And Igarashi says, well, I thought she was cool. Uh, she's she's cute looking. She's 19, and she is a, has two black belts in judo. How does that help us? I don't know. I just thought it would be a good idea. So they look at her work. Her work is subpar. However, when they see her, they go, they're calling her in, and she is trying to calm herself down. She's listening to the opening theme song to her favorite anime of all time, which is Panakata. And they open the door, and she's singing it. And she's like, oh, God. After they, she realizes they're watching her, and she stops, and she talks. She's like, so why? Have you had any training? No. Uh, are you an art student? No, not really. So then why do you want to be an animator? And she explains that she loves anime. Like Panacata, it helped her in a dark place. And she loves the aspects of it that no one expects. It's not just how it looks. She loves how the design work is, how you see visually the wind. You see water drops. You see motion. You see how animation does things that film doesn't do. And it's intriguing and engaging. And people work on that. And she wants to be a part of it because she loves animation. It's a very noble and sweet and actually like a, a good focus for what she wants to do. And we all felt that, that love of animation, love of manga. And she loves it. And they're like, that's really cool. Let's look at your work. And I look at her work and say, uh, we'll get back to you. So pretty much she's pretty sure she's not going to get the job. And as she's walking away... Director Cujo walks after her, just, he doesn't really give a reason why, but he starts following her, and he bumps into her, she, she kind of stumbles a little bit, but as they bump into each other, he drops three coins, accidentally, and this girl, who's a Juju artist, grabs one in the air, gives it back to him, says, I'm sorry about that, no, no problem, uh, also, the one is on the corner step, and the one is underneath the pot. In a split second, she was able to see where the two coins that had flown randomly in the air landed. In a split second. And as Cujo sees this, he stops, tells her, listen, it's raining outside. Do you have an umbrella? No. Okay, take my umbrella, bring it back in six months. Hinting that he's going to give her the job. And so she ends up getting a job because of her visual her visual abilities and her love of animation. And she ends up working for this studio. And they put her as a trainee individual. She's going to be working for Studio 7, but she's going to be interning in Studio 2 under uh, that guy I told you about, the, what is it, high god-tier animator Igarashi, who's worked on some absurd series. But he's also a huge drunk and a bald guy. You have his assistant, who's a key animator, Asishi, who's kind of overseeing her training. But more importantly, you have Miss Fuji, who is the in-between checker. And she's the one that is training her and her two compatriots. Well, her two compatriots are two other people who are hired, and they're higher level than her, and they treat her with disdain. You have Nato who went to Todai for animation. He was the vice president of the animation club, and his anime that he made has over 300,000 views on YouTube, so he thinks he's hot shit. When he does his first assignment, 
Fuji looks at it and is like, yeah, this is sloppy work. We don't want fast-paced stuff. You got to pay attention to what we need you to do. Because she gives all three of them a very simple assignment. Trace this cell because we want you to clean it up. All that she wanted to do, and he got it done in 30 minutes, but it's shitty. And she admits, it looks shitty. We don't need sloppy here. The next one is Miss Date, Maria Date. And she is the aforementioned daughter of a mangaka. And because of that, she says, one, don't mention my mother to me. And she has a huge chip on her shoulder. It's an honest, super nice to everybody, and yet she has such disdain for her. Like, what are you doing here? They both do, because they're like, I went to school for X amount of years in an animation school. Yet you get in? Who did you know? Who did you blow? How did you get in? And they're a little bit rude for her. And during the evaluation, she's not... Good at it because she has great design work. Like, she's a great inker because she's been inking for her mom for years. However, she's off by 0.2 millimeters, and that's not good. And she's like, oh, I didn't realize it's that important. Meanwhile, Sonata's not doing good. She's trying her best. She can't draw a straight line to save her life. However, when Fuji says, why are you taking so long? And let me see your work. What's taking so long? And what pencil did you use? And so now I was like, well, the hair was a little bit lighter than the other one, so I used an HB pencil there. But then for the clothing and for the wrinkles, I used a heavier pen, a 2B. Did I do that wrong? And Fuji's like, no, you, you're actually correct, but it's really not great work. You got to work on making a straight line. So this is how their day works, and you see that she's slowly progressing better and better. And when she starts, first time she does it, all right, you have to clean up this single frame, and that's what they have her do. While everyone else is working on other things, she's cleaning up the same frame. And first it takes her 13 hours to do one, then 10 hours, then 2 hours, and as she's working hard, getting frustrated, she sees purple notes left on her desk saying simple things like, one is, keep drawing on the same piece of paper till you get a straight line, till it's black. Okay, next one, use your whole arm. Next one, don't give up. Now, one of the cool things is that throughout the manga, in the chapter breaks, they actually explain little things here and there. Like, they explain the hiring process for becoming an animator. Next, here are the positions for an animator. Next one is, what are the definitions that are used? And one of them was, what are the papers that are used in animation? And a lot of them are corrections. Now, purple corrections, purple paper, is specifically for the director. So Kujo is taking an interest in this girl, and for reasons that we can assume is because he is reminded of himself by her. And one of the cool things is that you see a flashback when he proposed the idea to Fuji to kind of take this girl under her wing. And she says, I've had 20 trainees, and only two of them survived. And Kujo's like, well, out of the trainees that survived, where are they now? And she's like, they're some of the best animators possible. And he's like, exactly. He wants to turn this girl with no training to a great animator. She's young still. She could be molded. And that's what we're getting to. At the point of the end of the first volume, she is now doing a lot better she's able to draw lines she's actually moving forward even though there are some problems like the fact that she's still working slow and because she's working slow she's getting paid nothing because they charge her for the paper they charge her for the work and they pay her for the work but she's only getting one frame done per day so she's making like over a week she made 210 yen which is like five yen an hour so she's got to get herself together quick or else she's going to starve to death. Because she's like negative 47,000 yen. So she's like, oh God, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. So she has to work with that and figure out where she's going to go with that. And that's where it ends off. It's actually very intriguing to see her moving forward and also getting an inside look of an animation studio and show what the difference is between the different types of animators and learning about the different pieces that are needed to become an animator. Now, if you ever wanted to become an animator or get into animation, Japanese, American, whatever, I highly recommend this series. It gives you an in-depth look of what is happening behind the scenes of making an anime. 
Now, one of the things that I do find is the art is very detailed and it's actually really engaging. And I love that you actually see her art style progressing slowly over time. And it's little things because also her Kung Fu knowledge is helping her out a little bit because she's noticing subtle things that no one ever notices. Like when someone is doing long lines, the person hovers her hand above the paper. The person never noticed that. And it's like, I never noticed they did that. That's weird. And this girl is able to perceive it. So this is kind of like her hack for it. Like, okay, sir, her Kung Fu knowledge and her vision is able to make her a great animator. That's the only weird part. But it is realistic and it does give you steps towards improving your artwork. And the artwork is great. Uh, the scenes from the in-between are... They're... I want to say... Simple, but they're not simple. They're... They show character and they show development over time. They slowly get better and better. Now, the characters, for the most part, the only ones you really give a crap about are Sonata, Kujo, and Fuji. Because honestly, Date and Nato, you hate them both. Date has such a chip on her shoulder and Nato is a, just a jerk. Also, the president of the company doesn't like her and called, gave her a nickname and they said... Everyone who got a nickname from the president has quit the job in two months. And Sonata is trying to be like, no, I will not quit. I'm not going to quit. And she has that gumption of, I'm not going to give up. That's saggy. And they bring you that. You could have that all the passion you want, but if you don't have the talent, you're not going to survive here. So it does give you a little bit of realistic that you could get fired doing this if you don't put your all in it. You, it's all or nothing. And that's where it goes. And it also breaks the concept of, yeah, this job will not make you anything when you start off with. There are people who make over, uh, you know, over a million yen uh, or 10 million yen a year, but there's only 10 of them. So if you want to get into animation, you do it for the love of it. You're not doing it for the money. So it does break that down. And since it's a manga going over that, it is a unique choice for it, but I do like it. I would prefer to see this as an anime, but I do think that Showing it as a manga gives a little bit more analysis to it, and you can appreciate it a little bit more because she is drawing. And with all that being said, I had to think a while for what I wanted to rate this because on the one hand, it's a very engaging series, and Jay Novel did a great release with this. I love that they actually released a tangible manga. On the other hand, I don't see it as a read you can read more than once. Because once you read it, it's kind of that's it. You don't want to go really read it again unless you're going into the technical aspects of it. So I don't want to say that it's... I'm going to actually have to give it our middle of the ground, which is a gift from your crazy Aunt Muriel. It's okay, but forgettable, because if you are into the anime scene, you want to become an animator, you will love this manga. If you're in a slice of life or if you're in a realism, you will love this manga. If you're looking for escapism, you're not going to like this manga. Because it's going to be a little frustrating. Because the majority of this manga, this first volume, is her drawing the same page over and over and over again. You're not going to enjoy it if you're not looking for that. If you want action or a high-paced story, that's not this. This is character development at its best. And that's a, um, it's a positive, but it also could be negative. Now, if you've read this and you agree with me, or disagree, email me, xanspiker.com. Let me know what you think about Anameta. If you really think it's great or if you think it's not that great, let me know what, where you think this is and where it goes. Would you like an anime adaptation of this? That's actually going to be the random question of the day. Do you think an anime adaptation of this would be good? Let me know. So, remember, you can check out any of our earlier episodes at www.spiker.com. You can email me personally at xanspiker.com. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash help Zan. Leave a comment on our Apple podcast site. And let's get to the part you've all been waiting for. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about that one. That only. The Wheel of Manga. Yes, friends, Wheel of Manga. Except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it. What I've done is I've assigned a manga tile to each of the 10 slots. What we're going to do is we're going to spin that Wheel of Manga. Whatever number it lands on, the manga that's corresponding to that number is the manga we review in the next episode of the Spire Can Manga Review. Episode 350.
55. And I'm kind of excited for this one because we've got some great titles on here and some weird titles. And we've got two Isekais on here. We've got two Seten series. We've got two Shonen series, two Jose series, and two random. So let's spin into your review in the next episode, shall we? Pretty decent spin, not great, but we'll see how it goes. And it's number nine. So in the next episode of the Spark and Manga Review, we're going to be talking about a spinoff of a very popular series that is educational. And what series are we talking about? We are talking about Cells at Work, Code Black. The more adult version of Cells at Work. And what are they talking about? Well, you're going to have to wait to find out. So... Either way, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. I hope you guys are doing great, and I hope that you guys keep listening. I've been your Hosan. I'm Gonzo. Catch you guys next time, and keep reading manga. See ya!